Hello everyone, tonight I've got a very exciting game from the 2019 South African Closed Chess Championships Open. And there's a big paradox in that name. This game is between two FMs and it was played in the final round. It's between Roberto de Abreu and Mohamed Bahudian. And they're both very strong players trying to get in the extra points before the tournament's over. And, okay, we have, we have a Slav on board, uh, Roberto opening with d4. And this pawn is captured, so so the the gambit is kind of played. And e4, b4, uh, b5, and bishop e2, b5, and e5. And this is all kind of theory, and it was played previously in the year between Carlson and Yu Yang Yi, uh, where where the players captured and and the pawns were captured back very sensibly. In this game, we see something completely different. So okay, firstly, this these pieces, the miners are captured with the pawns. And now it's in this position that uh, uh, Bawadian goes for a novelty. He's, he's put on his computer at home and he's, he's decided C takes B2 is the strongest move. You can go do the same, you'll see he's come up with the correct novelty here. And probably why it's just best if he recaptures with the bishop and plays against these uh, double pawns. But instead, Roberto spends half an hour, recaptures this pawn, forcing Bawadian to spend half an hour to go into this line <laughs> with one queen on the board, followed by a second queen on the board, followed by four queens actually on the board. And this is just very absurd. We have queen a5 check. And the point is actually you want, you want your queens to coordinate on the king. So um, the, best, the best move would have been knight bd2, walking into the c3 things. And apparently, apparently you are quite OK in this line. But king f1 is also a reasonable move. And now Bawoodian spends half an hour just to capture this pawn. <laughs> Not too sure why he went for this. Uh, this is also a straightforward idea just to pile up on the piece on c1. Um, but okay, going after a pawn is sometimes a solid idea even when there are four queens on the board. And we have knight g5. White prospectively wanted this bishop to go to h6, but it doesn't work immediately. Um, the stronger idea would be to go for this pawn and just to centralize the piece. Also possible was knight e5, since this pawn, uh, although not protected by this queen, is now protected by your other queen. Uh, very interesting. Uh, bishop f5, now g4. Making a flight square for the king, you need to do something with tempo like that. Bishop f3. And now Bawudian, he's got seven minutes on the clock. He's a lot of time before this move. And he just decides, okay, man, like I've had enough of four queens on the board. Let's let's just trade a piece, please. Trade a pair, please. And he, he wants to do this so that he can also get his fast pawn and then make another queen. Uh, this guy likes making queens. Rubati doesn't allow this. Um, it would have been a bit of a stronger move just to go king g2 and maybe just recapture here. But okay, he goes queen d7. Now, queen d2. And now, knight d7 would have been a strong move with the idea of castling. And there are some lines where this queen is actually trapped after the knight closes these squares. and But instead, h6 tries to get rid of rid of the knight. Another move, knight e6, a very strong move, a very clever move. Uh, with not a lot of time of the clock, Rabatta comes up with this move. And the idea is that after f takes, he can play queen f4 and coordinate on this bishop very nicely and okay he plays queen f4 immediately he's not, he's not actually supposed to we will get to that now he's supposed to just go king g2 and then his ideas still work of going queen f4 or even queen takes h6 and and this is pretty sound for him instead he goes queen f4 immediately and you can quickly pause the video and find the winning continuation for black okay so i'm going to show it now if you found the winning continuation, well done. Uh, Roberto uh, Bawudian didn't find the winning continuation. It starts with queen takes c1 check. And this forces the king and the queen. It forks them, but OK, it drops the queen. Moving the king just drops the queen, obviously. So now queen recaptures the, um, the bishop on f3. And his point is simple. He wants to bring his bishop to d3 and checkmate. You can't save this rook just because, just because of the checkmate. And running king to g1, walked into a very similar checkmate with king f1 and just bishop d3 check now and this is this is game over. So a very strong queen sacrifice, also getting up uh, the rook in the end after after all of this. But Bawudian, only with three minutes on the clock, doesn't find it. After queen f4, he goes knight e7 and he tries to castle queenside. 
queen g8, and now queen d3 check, king g2, and castles queen side. Uh, instead of castling queen side, just for the time being, apparently e5 was a bit stronger. Uh, you needed to uh, bring your queens back into the game via uh, an e5 move. And you should start coordinating in, in the center where, where white's king is moving to. But castling allows queen takes e6 check, and now it feels like these queens are suddenly coordinating. Hey, but that's not the end of the game. The game still has many ups and downs. This is actually plus 10 at the moment for white, but we'll see a plus 10 become nothing soon. Queen a6, defending the spawn, bishop b2, uh, making room for the rook to enter. And now c3, just going for another queen, because four, four queens on the board isn't enough. Rook a1, and okay, he sacks his queen, uh, but with the potential of making another queen. And just defending the spawn for the time being. Uh, this piece is also hanging, but now he, okay, he plays e5. Uh, better would have been just to go queen b6 and try and do something with this pawn. But yet again, we, he's, he's got a minute on the clock, so this insaneness is, uh, is given. This feels like a tempo move to free up the, the bishop. But queen f to e4 is perfectly fine. Brings another queen to the defense, and actually you're starting to tie down black's king now. Um, we'll see what happens in a second. King, now are you also coordinating on the on the c6 square, trying to trade on queens? So knight b8 is kind of necessary, just to stop stop the trade of queens there. And now d5, trying to pry open the center. Rook takes, and this kind of just loses the piece on um, f8. But it's tricky to see all these forks, and the forks are available if you've got two queens attacking. But king c7, and still plus nine for white. The queen comes back to the defend, and now finally the queen gets behind the pawn. And this is where prospects seem to start moving up again for black. And just slow maneuvering, uh, the clock's still running on both sides. They haven't reached time control yet, this is still move 32. And we have queen c5 going for this pawn, and then simply this defense. And it's at this time that it's suddenly, after the plus 10 from a few, few moves ago, uh, by William, he's defended really well, and he's got a actually a bit of an advantage now after the move rook c2 just shutting down communication he's suddenly the one in the driver's seat keeping some tension here also threatening rook c1 b1 equals a queen but he doesn't go for this with 46 seconds on the clock he throws his rook back which seems natural but now the queens are defending really well and they've coordinated against the pawn and this pawn is lost and now um roberto's got five minutes on the clock versus the, um, the 40 seconds that Bahudian has. He's defending and he's attacking. His position is actually quite comfortable. And after knight b8, uh, just simply queen takes e5 check, and they've reached time control. Both sides get an extra half an hour. King c8, stepping under this check, and the final move of the game, uh, queen e4. And it's actually clear why uh, black resigns here. It's just because of these two queens coordinating. So while uh, there's not much to do, the queens can even get traded off quickly, and then there might be a fork on the rook. And this is just an easy game from here on. You, you're tied down to defending your pieces. If, say, for instance, knight d7, uh, just simply queen a5. You're not stopping these queens from entering. Uh, queen f7, um, just queen takes a7. I think this is going far enough. There's there's no defending this really. And with an extra half hour on the clock reaching time control, Roberto deserved his last round win in a crazy position, going for something that he probably shouldn't have theoretically, but practically in the last round going for the win, um, getting those two queens on the board for him and for his opponent was a very good call and made for a very, very interesting game. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe and I will keep posting new videos soon, so yeah, hit that subscribe button to stay on date. Thank you for watching.